So now that we've created our first image using Packer, I think it's time we moved on to learning about Provisioner. So this is the second aspect of a Packer configuration. And this is where the customizability actually comes into play. So Provisioners, as defined by Packer, uh, is basically where we can install and configure our machine image. So this is where we can you know, install packages, we can patch kernels, we can create users. Um, if we're working on some kind of application like a Node application or a Django application, we can copy our code over to the machine so that our images already have all of our code baked in so that we don't have to copy the code over after we deploy an EC2 instance. Um, but obviously, um, you know, we could do a ton of things here. We can set up a firewall on a machine. Um, really, any kind of customization that you would do to a machine that's already running, uh, we can bake all of those changes into a pre-built image. So Packer has support for uh, several different provisioners. And you'll see that a lot of the common automation and config management tools that you guys may already be familiar with, we can actually use them with Packer so that we can customize our images. So you'll see that we have support for things like Ansible, Chef, um, Puppet. So a lot of the major config management tools are there, but we also have options to um, the shell provisioner. And this is actually going to be the one that we're going to start out with because it's the simplest one. I think it's probably going to be the most commonly used one as well. And what I'm going to do is let's go back to our code and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this project two. And I'm going to just take the, the um, Packer configs from the previous project and I'm just going to paste it into project two as well. So uh, most of the stuff is going to stay the same. Um, but for this project, what I want to do is I want to create a custom Ubuntu image. So we're going to take an AMI, um, you know, one of AWS's uh, Ubuntu AMIs. And we're going to customize it so that we automatically install Nginx, which is, you know, a web server that you can run on a Linux machine. So let's head on over back to the AWS console. I'm going to do launch instance, and I'm going to get the AMI for an Ubuntu machine. So if I scroll down, uh, you'll see that it's going to be one of the top ones. So here we've got Ubuntu server 18.0.4. Um, if you can't find it, then just go ahead and search for it. And I'm going to copy this AMI right here. And so the source AMI is going to be what's changed. So this is going to be the base image that we're going to create our custom config from. I'm going to paste that in. And let's give this a new name. So I'll just call this um, Ubuntu Engine X. Call this Project 2. Just so we know that this is part of Project 2. And so now we have to use a provisioner so that we can actually install uh, Engine X onto our image. And let's go back to the documentation. And we're gonna be using the shell provisioner for that. So you'll see that to create a provisioner, um, you know, we got the curly braces because this is JSON. Um, and for type, we specify shell, okay? And then we have this inline property, which is going to take an array, and it's gonna take an array of different commands you want to run against the command line. So here, we can do a sudo apt install, sudo apt update, we can do an install nginx and things like that. So any command you run on the command line, um, you know, we can tell uh, Packer to do that for us automatically. Okay, so right under Builders, I'm going to do Provisioners. So this is going to be the section that's going to define all of our pro Provisioners. And this is going to take an array just like the Builders did, right? So you can see Builders here took an array, so is Provisioners. And the reason why it takes an array is that we can actually use multiple Provisioners for a single image. And so that's just going to give us just a little bit more flexibility with how we config um, our image. Uh, so we can use Ansible, we can use Shell, we can use Chef, Puppet, all, all of those provisioners uh, all in one go so that, you know, we can basically generate and customize a image to however we want. It just gives us a little bit more flexibility. So here I'm going to specify type. And so this provisioner is just going to be the type of Shell. And remember, this actually needs to be placed within curly braces. So here we've got type, shell, and then we have to pass in the inline property. And so this is going to take an array of the different commands that we want to run. Now, to install Nginx, it's very easy. We just need to do two commands, all right? So the first command is going to be a sudo apt update. You know, we need to do sudo because we need root privilege, and then we want to update our repository. And then after that, we want to do a sudo apt install and then nginx. And we want to do a dash y so that we don't get a prompt asking if we actually want to install it. We want to automatically do that because this is all part of an automation script. All right, so these are the only two commands that you need. 
However, there's one last thing that I want to do. Uh, and so this is just to ad address a specific, you know, race condition where there's a potential chance that, you know, when the EC2 instance first boots up, that the SSH daemon um, starts up immediately and allows Packer to SSH into the box to start making config changes. However, there's a possibility that maybe the rest of the operating system hasn't fully booted. Uh, and that can ultimately lead to some issues. So what I recommend that you guys do is always start off with like a sleep of 30. So this is just going to make us essentially wait for 30 seconds before we do anything. And so that's going to give the operating system a chance to fully boot up and um, and initialize everything it needs to so that we don't run into any errors. And obviously you can play around with this number, um, but I think 30 seems to work well for me. So that's what I'm going to stick with. Okay, and so this is all we should need to be able to take an Ubuntu image and install Nginx. Right? And so that way, if we deploy our image, it's going to already have Nginx and we don't have to do anything once we deploy that image. And there's actually one more thing that we need to do, actually. Uh, Amazon, their default password or the default username for Ubuntu images is not EC2 user. It's actually Ubuntu. So you want to make sure you change that so that uh, Packer, it knows to be able to, knows how to connect to this device. Okay, so let's save that and we're going to do a Packer build. And make sure you change into the project to directory. So here, if we do a Packer build, actually, let me make sure to save the configs. And we now we do example.json. All right, so let's let that run. And, uh, you know, I definitely recommend that you guys kind of follow along with the output. Um, because it's going to really teach you exactly what's happening. So, uh, you know, once again, it's created an AWS instance. Uh, and uh, right now it's just waiting for that instance to come online. So once that instance comes online, uh, you'll see that it's going to then start provisioning these things. So once it comes online, it's going to run the sleep 30, which is just going to make us wait 30 seconds. And then it's going to run a sudo apt update and then a sudo apt install nginx. And then once all of those things are done, uh, it'll then stop the EC2 instance, it'll generate an image and then it'll destroy the EC2 instance, just like it did in the previous example. So you can see here, um, it's waiting for that SSH uh, connection to become available. And so once that SSH daemon uh, boots up, we can then connect to it. And then now the provisioner is kicking in. All right, and if you take a look at the output again, um, you'll notice somewhere inside all of this output, but you can see that these are going to be the new packages that are going to be installed. And so you can see Nginx, as well as some of its other dependencies that are all going to get installed. And then once that's complete, it's going to then shut down our AMI. So it's actually stopped the instance. Uh, and so now it's going to create that AMI for us. And then once that's done, we're good to go. And then we can actually deploy an EC2 instance using that image. And we'll take a look and we'll verify that Nginx actually got installed for us automatically. All right, so it looks like our AMI has been created. Let's go to the console and verify that it's there. So under EC2, we're gonna go to our AMIs and we can see our Ubuntu-Nginx-Project2 AMI has been created. And you know we still have to actually deploy an EC2 instance with this image to verify that our provisioner actually worked. So I'm going to uh, launch an EC2 instance with this image and we'll just do review and launch. And you're going to have to select a key pair. So I'm not going to walk you through how to set up a key pair. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so we're just going to acknowledge this. We'll launch an instance. And so that's just so that we can actually SSH to this box. And if you guys are just trying to learn Packer, you can just skip this step. Uh, it's just going to be there to you know show you guys, hey, look, it actually worked. I already know it's going to work, but I do want to show you guys that. Don't just take my word for it. And once the machine is done initializing, uh, we can open up our command line and SSH to it. Okay, so once you're connected to the box, uh, the only thing that we have to do is just verify that Nginx is installed. So if we do a system, uh, system CTL status Nginx, uh, you can see that it's installed and it's actually running at the moment. All right, so that confirms that our Packer image already has Nginx built into the image so that anytime we go to deploy this image, uh, that EC2 instance is already going to have all of the necessary packages that we want to install.